Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Mike Mills. I, the, the slide's actually incorrect. I'm, I'm the president of Body and Mind at this point. Um, and uh, just uh, really appreciate you taking time to find out about our company. If we can uh, start this slow. So um, we've been around for about five years, and we've been fairly quiet about what we've done. Um, we went public a couple years ago. Oh, I don't have a clicker. Sorry. I oh, here it is. Uh, we'll go through, the, uh, go through the disclaimer fairly quickly. So, you know, we're an emerging multi-state operator. Uh, we have a health and wellness strategy. Um, we have retail, uh, distribution, cultivation across four states. We started in Nevada. We're in California, Ohio, and Arkansas as well. Uh, we take a platform approach. We get into a state. Uh, we start to understand the state, and we take, uh, uh, we take our operations and our skilled management team and move them into that state. In general, our growth has been through license application and winning license applications. We feel that's probably one of the better ways to build shareholder value in this business right now. So just sort of take you through uh, the origins of body and mind. I think it's really important for everyone to understand where the company came from, to understand where we're going. Uh, we started in uh, 2015. We were one of the first uh, uh, cultivation and production licenses in Nevada. Uh, medical at that point, a very small market. Um, and it gave us an opportunity to do a, a few different things. The first thing was really focus on quality. Um, and we do a lot of, of crossbreeding. We come up with new strains. Um, and we have a team of, uh, on our cultivation side that has always prided themselves on, on putting out some of the best product uh, possible. Uh, the other thing that we did that was fairly new in, in the medical market was we focused on a brand. And you hear a lot about brands right now, but believe me, five years ago in, in, uh, in the medical world, brands really weren't uh, that, that big an issue. You know, people were delivering product in glass jars and things like that. Um, we felt the Body and Mind brand was a very strong brand and, um, and continued to develop that. And um, the third thing that we really realized, I think, when we won the Nevada um, licenses was that there's other opportunities opening up in the country and anybody who's been in this business for a long time realizes that you know four and five years ago there weren't that many people writing license applications for some of these new states that were opening up the states that we liked are limited license states so we focused on those states um, in Ohio um, we, we looked at they, they copied a lot of the the rules and regulations from Nevada so it was very easy for us to understand their licensing process how to write the application uh, we want a dispensary license in Ohio. We also run a, a provisional production license, which uh, we haven't done anything with a provisional production license. Um, we went public in, in um, uh, late 2017, just after Nevada went, w w moved from medical to adult rec. And uh, anybody who's been in a state that has transitioned from medical to adult rec, it's a, it's a big, big change. And all of a sudden, all the work that you did as a medical company, getting into dispensaries, developing relationships, becomes infinitely more important because uh, the, your market size grows and grows and grows. And you know what's really interesting is looking at, at Nevada sort of as a microcosm of adult rec legalization across North America. You know, if you went to Nevada five years ago and you got caught smoking a joint, you'd probably go to jail. Um, when it went adult rec, you started to see more advertising. But what was really interesting, you know, I talked to, when I go into dispensaries and I talk to people who are here, say, on a conference every year, the comment that I hear again and again is, geez, it, it really feels like it's normal here now. Um, and what's, you know, what I see happening in, in Nevada is that normalization of, can, of adult use cannabis is, is being exported all across the U.S. There's 44, people, 44 million people who come to Las Vegas every year as visitors uh, from all over the United States, all over the world. And, and people who come sort of an, on an annual conference basis or on an annual trip basis are seeing Nevada changing in this normalization of adult use cannabis. So um, just sort of fast forwarding for, uh, forward a little bit here. While we were doing the uh, license apps in Ohio, we also started license apps in Arkansas. Um, and uh, you, you know, we continued to build out the Nevada facility. And then in 2018, we signed a, uh, an LOI that's turned into a definitive agreement for two dispensaries in California. One of them is operating. Um, and th that was part of the show grow chain. Um, so we've, uh, we've started operating that. Um, in May of this year, we did a, a capital raise uh, for just over $14 million. And um, we retired some debt that we had. And uh, just prior to that, we had a strategic investment by Australis Capital. They're the US spin out of Aurora. Um, and they came in and um, own roughly 37% of the company at this point. So they did a fair amount of due diligence when they, uh, when they came in and made their investment. And, uh, and they've since 
um, cash some warrants as well. So, so our treasury is actually in, in great shape at this point. Uh, as we move through this year, uh, we've really started to accelerate our growth plans. Um, in California, we went definitive with our deal for the Showgrow dispensaries um, this summer. Um, and we took over management of the Long Beach Showgrow Dispensary in California um, in August. Um, in Arkansas, we signed a management contract uh, with our partners there, Comprehensive Care Group. Um, in, our, in Ohio, we opened our dispensary in February. Uh, that's going very well. It's a huge state, and I'll get into the, the, the market size in, in just a little bit here. Um, in Nevada, we started a construction project. Uh, we realized we have a couple really high-end uh, edibles, oils, and extracts. Um, as opposed to sort of taking the standard route of, of going and building a big facility and then producing products out of that facility, we produced them all out of a very small facility and uh, understood what went well. We did a lot of R&D uh, on both extracts and uh, on the edible side when we were medical, and we transitioned a lot of that into the, our adult rec products. Um, we're, we're in the process now of our construction of a new production facility in Nevada. And um, that's going to give us about eight times the square footage that we're operating out of right now. But I, I think the beauty for us is we know what products are, are selling out of, the, out of the Nevada market. Um, in Q3, which are, is our most recent financials, we came out with a, an earnings per share of zero. Now, that, that's not something you want to brag about in the business world. But what we've seen in the cannabis world is companies that are growing very quickly, have a lot of projects on the go, are finding it hard to have anywhere near a, a flat or positive earnings per share. Um, in Ohio, we have a production license. We're starting to take a look at that. Um, typically in a medical state, uh, the price of flour, the price of trim is extremely expensive um, when states open up. Uh, that's been the case with Ohio. Uh, we're starting to see more um, flexibility with trim and uh, are looking to activate the production license in Ohio fairly shortly here. Um, in Arkansas, we started the construction of, uh, of the dispensary. A dispensary in Arkansas will give you um, not just a dispensary, but you can also have cultivation attached to that, which, which will allow you to grow up to 50 plants. So we have plans to grow 50 very large flowering plants as part of that application. So that's just a bit of where we started and, and where we've come from and, uh, and where we are now. You know, our, our strategy is very simple. Um, we identify opportunities in general. They've been low-cost license applications in new states and new markets that are opening up. Um, once we've identified an opportunity or, or we've, we've started that opportunity, uh, we have a very experienced cannabis team who's been in the business for years and years, and we look to optimize that. We have, a, we have a, I think, a fairly innate ability to look at opportunities and understand if the opportunities that we're reviewing are being well run and if there's an opportunity for us to move forward and, and optimize that and, and, and potentially do better than, than the people that are running it now. Um, you know, as we assess opportunities, one of the things that works very well for us is we already have a footprint and we already have people in the states that we're in. Um, it's very, you know, because we've got a five-year history, because we've got people who've been in the business for a long time and understand all the aspects of the business, it's very easy for us to assess opportunities fairly quick, quickly. And execution, execution's king in this business. Um, I think it's one of the reasons that, that we're able to, um, to, to be in a good cash position and also to be at zero earnings per share right now. Uh, we execute on, on, you know, we work to execute on everything that we do, uh, whether it's opening a dispensary, uh, opening a cultivation, or moving our brand into a new state. Um, talk about our seasoned leadership team. You know, we have a long, long track record of, of successful applications um, and winning licenses. And uh, anybody who's been through the license process, it's, uh, it's a huge process. It's not that fun. It's becoming more and more and more competitive as, as more companies develop pro teams. Uh, we have a very good uh, mix of real estate understanding. Uh, obviously, zoning and real estate is a big part of, of winning license apps. Um, but actually writing the, the uh, application is a, is a huge process and understanding where the opportunities are popping up. I think everybody in this business will tell you that they probably grow the best cannabis. Um, we've won a lot of awards for our, for our strains. Uh, we've won High Times Awards. We've won Emerald Cup Awards. We've won Secret Cup Awards. Uh, we just won uh, the Las Vegas 2019 Bud Bracket Award. Um, we've, we've always focused on a high quality product and uh, it's something that we're very passionate about. I don't think I have to, I think everyone's heard the numbers and bandied around. Um, we've gone through, you know, we used some, some relatively conservative numbers, but uh, I think everybody who's here understands that the market is, is enormous. Um, and, you know, uh, there's a bit of a, when you go into these dispensaries and you see the cash registers and the lineups 
and, um, and the amount of, of interest, not just on the medical side, but, but also on the adult rec side, there's a huge disconnect between what's happening in the capital markets um, with share prices and, and the overall market. Um, this is something that, that is gonna continue to grow. So just talk about our, our geographic footprint um, in California. We're managing the Showgro Long Beach dispensary now. Um, that's under a definitive agreement. That definitive agreement will be finalized once the, the licenses are transferred and all those processes are in place. So we're really waiting on bureaucracy at this point. Um, the other thing that we have in California so that we can bring our Brody and Mind brands into the state is uh, we're managing a, uh, a licensed facility in Cathedral City. So we're the management contractor. We have about 70 SKUs in Nevada that we've really proven out over time. Uh, we plan to bring most of those products into the California market. Uh, in Nevada, I've talked about a fair amount. We've been in Nevada for close to five years with licensed cultivation and production. Um, in Arkansas, our dispensary uh, with our partners, Comprehensive Hair Care, is under construction right now. And in Ohio, we have a dispensary that's in operation, and uh, we have production licenses that, are, uh, that we're working on uh, activating relatively soon. So just go state by state with a little bit more detail. Um, Nevada, I think I might have said 44 million visitors earlier. It's 42 million visitors. Um, you know, the state has, um, the state has, has done a, a great job in bringing adult recreation um, to the state. And uh, I, I think that everyone's probably aware that there's some issues with the last round of licenses that, that, um, that were granted. Uh, we, had, we put a number of license applications in that. Um, it seems like that whole process is going to be uh, slowed down. It's something that we've seen in other states, um, and it's, it's not uncommon. Um, we have about a 20,000 square foot facility in, uh, in Nevada, and as we move our production out of that, we'll start to fill the production area with more cultivation. Uh, our new production facility is in around the 8,000 square foot mark. Um, we had about 132% year over year sales in our, our first nine months in 2019. Uh, in Ohio, you know, every time I talk to people about Ohio, they say, well, why would you focus on Ohio? Ohio's got 11 and a half million people. Uh, it's the seventh largest state. And again, like Nevada, it's a limited license state. So there's only about 30 dispensaries open. There was less than 60 dispensaries awarded um, during the initial medical process by, uh, by Ohio. Uh, we, branded, we branded our dispensary the Clubhouse Dispensary, and um, it's been open since about February. Uh, we're very pleased with the way things are going sales-wise. Um, it is, you know, it's still a, a medical state. Uh, it's not as restrictive as some states, but um, uh, we're, we're quite happy with the way things are going there. Looking forward to um, activating the production license as we start to see trim prices come down, and it makes a, a, there's a good business case for activating that license. Uh, in California, you know, California is uh, it's very close to Nevada, which allows us to, to move some of our talented people. Um, into that state and, and assist with our expansion in there. Um, we knew that having dispensaries in California was an important thing for the company. Um, that's why we did the, uh, the Showgrow deal last year. As I mentioned, we're managing the, the Long Beach dispensary. Uh, we're in construction in the San Diego dispensary. That construction's fully funded. Uh, we own, we'll own, end up owning 60% of that when the deal closes. And uh, we have a dispensary application in, in process in Chula Vista. Um, just talk a little bit about our manufacturing facility, as I mentioned earlier. Um, once we had the dispensaries uh, online, we knew that we wanted to bring our, our popular Body and Mind brand into California. The way to do that was either to go out and spend a lot of money um, on a facility and activating a license, which is both time consuming and requ requires a great deal of capex, or we chose a, a, a much faster and less expensive route, which was working with a license holder and manufacturing the facility for them. We, we found that, that uh, this would allow us to move into California very quickly. Um, the, the sort of upside of that is we, we've signed that licensing, or we find, signed that, that operations agreement in, I think it was early June this year, and we had Body and Mind products at Hall of Flowers um, in September. So uh, we're really proud of, of our team there and their ability to roll things out uh, incredibly quickly. 
Arkansas, a lot of people have, a lot of people ask me, well, why are you in Arkansas? Arkansas has a population of about three million people, and if there's anybody um, in Canada here, that that's equivalent to you know one something like Alberta, which is uh, which has got something in the range of I think there's two or three hundred dispensary licenses in Alberta. Uh, there's 32 dispensary licenses in Arkansas. We expect that that a lot of those won't and ever end up opening. Um, ours is under construction, as I mentioned earlier. We uh, have the ability to grow 50 plants, uh, so we'll grow 50 very large flowering plants as part of the dispensary uh, license. Uh, we expect that to open uh, end of Q4, more likely Q1 2020, um, and that's with our, uh, our Arkansas Partners Comprehensive Care Group. Uh, we have a strategic investor, Australis Capital. Uh, they were the, the U.S. spin out of Aurora when Aurora had to divest their U.S. assets. Uh, they're a portfolio company. They make investments in, in a large number of cannabis companies. Um, they have a, they have a, a, a great team. Uh, who's been helpful? They were they were a huge assistance during uh, during our sugar acquisition. Um, it's it's really nice to have a, a deep bench of talent to to work on. We're a relatively tight management team at Body and Mind. We've always been focused on keeping our overhead as low as we can. So being able to to reach out and and get help with with external resources, particularly with that level of professionalism, has been uh, has been a real benefit. Um, so some of the future milestones that we have coming down the pipe. Um, we expect our Nevada production facility to be finished the end of the end of this year. Um, in Ohio, uh, the production facility planning is ongoing. Um, in California, uh, we've already got some products coming out of Cathedral City. We'll have some of our more popular products, things like pretzel bites. If anyone's tasted our pretzel bites, they're fantastic. Um, we expect those to be out uh, later on uh, this quarter. Um, we have a, a result coming from Chula Vista, which is a limited license dispensary application. Uh, we expect that coming out this quarter as well. Um, in Arkansas, the dispensary co construction's underway right now. We, we expect to be finished construction by the end of this year, but with license delays and things like that, it's probably going to bleed into the first quarter of next year. Um, in California, uh, we should have the San Diego dispensary complete. Um, Probably again, construction finished towards the end of this year. By the time you have inspections, licenses, it'll bleed into um, into the first quarter of next year. Uh, just to give you a rough idea of the leadership, uh, myself, I'm the president, and interim CEO. I spent about 10 years with the Financial Post newspaper and another uh, 10, 15 years in the in the resource world. So I understand the capital market side uh, very clearly. Dong is our uh, our chief financial officer. Um, he's been uh, working with public companies for years and years and years, ton, tons of experience. Uh, Trip is our chief operating officer. He's got a hand in every single one of our operations um, in every state that we're in. Um, he's been in the cannabis industry, uh, started in Colorado roughly six years ago. He's also worked as a trader. Uh, he has a PhD in physics. He's an incredible asset to our team. Um, on our board of directors, we have Brent Reuter, who's our, our, um, our newest um, board member, and he uh, is one of the board members that Australis uh, has on the board as part of their strategic investment. Uh, David Wanger, you probably have seen him on a panel or, or two, or if you've been in a number of these conferences. Robert Hasman is one of the founders of Body and Mind, and Kevin Hooks is one of the early investors of Body and Mind. We have a great board, a lot of talent who, uh, who's been able to, to help us move forward. So just some select financials. Um, our cash at the end of April, which is our last quarter that we've reported, was 2.6 million. Uh, since then, we did a $14.7 million raise in May. Uh, we did another 6 point, close to 6.4 in warrant exercise from Australis. Um, and then we've got um, some shares that we've promised as part of the definitive agreement for Showgrow. So we're in a very strong cash position. And as, as I mentioned earlier, uh, our earnings per share in the last quarter, Q3, uh, was zero. So we're, we have a very, almost no burn, and, uh, and, and the cash that we have on hand, roughly 50% of it is, uh, is uh, allocated for our CapEx needs for the three construction projects I mentioned earlier. So we have quite a buffer. So just some of the highlights of the company, um, you know, revenue growth. Uh, we've, I've had a lot of people at this conference say, how come I've never heard of you? Um, you sort of fall underneath our, our three to $5 million a quarter clip rate. Um, up until now, we really haven't reported a lot of the revenue from other operations. Um, our Q3 only includes revenue from Nevada. As we start to layer these other projects on, as we start to layer Ohio on, as we start to layer Show Grow uh, Long Beach on, as Arkansas and San Diego are, are complete, uh, and again, those are fully funded, 
uh, we expect to see that J curve um, come down the pipe fairly quickly here. Um, exceptional quality, as I mentioned earlier, it's something we fo we've focused on from day one. Um, you know, Tripp and I had a conversation a while ago about growing the company and moving quickly. And, and one of the things that, that I thought really resonated with me is that we have an incredible culture of body and mind. We have a lot of people who've been with us since day one. Um, they help start the company, they believe in the company, and their focus is on creating the best products they possibly can. There's a lot of pride in our group. Um, and if you grow too quickly and you move in too many directions too quickly, you can destroy that culture very, very quickly. So we've been very focused on, on layering people on in such a way that we can take the experienced folks that we have move them to the new operations and continue the culture that's made us successful to here. Um, I'm almost out of time here. Uh, the one thing that I would comment is we have a very high insider ownership between Australis and, and uh, uh, early owners of the, of the company. We're well over 50% insider ownership. So uh, we feel like we're in a really good position in this market. Uh, we've, got, uh, we've got a lot of growth prospects that are fully funded on the go. And uh, it's, uh, I appreciate your time to come and understand BAM. Thank you.